photos on Pinterest. As we near the end of this course, I want to show you something really, really exciting. There's scientific research on what makes a really good Pinterest picture. A company has done research on millions of photos on Pinterest to determine the six aspects of the most successful photos. And in this lesson, we're going to go over some of that research and look at what elements make your pictures get more pins on Pinterest, more likes on Instagram, and more shares overall. You see, I always wondered why some of my pictures were more successful on sites like Pinterest and Instagram. Some of them had 300 likes on Instagram, and this sweet potato shepherd's pie has over 15,000 pins on Pinterest. And I wasn't quite sure why this was happening, and other food that was just as good and the pictures were well composed has like, you know, 50 or 100 pins on Pinterest. What makes the difference? And then a friend sent me this article just a month or two ago, and it totally changed the way I look at things. There's a research firm called Curalate, which studies what makes some pictures more successful than others on the social web. And this is like a blueprint for making your pictures go viral. Adding these elements to my pictures has certainly resulted in more pins and likes for my pictures. So here we're going to go over those six elements that they discuss in this article. The first is that pictures without people were pinned 23% more often. According to the researchers, faces seem to be a distraction from whatever's going on, whereas Facebook and other social networks are built around people and human connections. Pinterest is more about things, so if you leave people out of your pictures, they're more likely to be successful. The second is having a simple background. When your background content rises above 40% of the total space on your picture, the repins drop in half or to even a quarter, and that's significant. So you want to have a simple, well-composed, clean background that creates a compelling context in a minimal space, is the quote they used. Pins with multiple colors did a lot better. Where they had multiple dominant colors, they gained three times more comments and mentions than those that just had one dominant color scheme. Similarly, images with lots of red and orange tended to get twice as many repins as those that were more predominantly blue or another color. This may sound familiar, but making your pictures look more natural was also a big indicator of how successful the pictures were. Images with natural color saturation that wasn't oversaturated and wasn't black and white gained four to ten times as many repins as those on the extremes. So making your pictures look more natural in terms of its coloring, as we've talked about, seems to be a big benefit. Um, the same is also true with lighting and exposure. Pictures that were really overexposed and very underexposed tended to do worse than those that were of a natural exposure level. And as we've talked about quite a few times here, pictures in portrait style on Pinterest tended to do a lot better than those in landscape style. Again, this is because Pinterest is oriented towards portrait style pictures. They get more space on the screen and they're more noticeable than those that are smaller and more landscape format. So this is further confirmation that you definitely want to take your pictures in portrait mode if you're uploading them to Pinterest. So we went over these really quickly. Let's just recap them here. So you don't want to have human faces. You want fewer background elements, multiple colors, lots of red and orange, moderate and natural lighting, and you want to take your pictures in portrait style. The day after I read this article, I was so blown away, I wanted to set up a photo shoot to test out this information. So what I did is I made these zucchini fritters in the tomato sauce. I think this is the one picture of mine that best encapsulates all six of these elements. Now faces, the background is simple, it's on a clean, bright surface. There's multiple colors, there's greens and browns and grays, and most importantly, lots of red, which is the fourth element. Uh, it also has very natural lighting, it's not too overexposed or underexposed, good color saturation, and it's shot in portrait style. I did all of these elements on purpose after reading this article on what's successful. And guess what? This picture has been pinned 4,000 times. In the first 24 hours, I got 1,000 pins on this picture. I was completely blown away by how accurate and successful these techniques are. But at the end of the day, 
I don't really see this as like a sleazy technique to get more pins and likes that boost my ego. What I see here is scientific proof about how to take good pictures. Because if research is showing that millions of users pin and like these type of images more often, that's what these people like. That's where their votes are going. Their pins are like a vote that says, yes, I like this picture. I like the way it's composed. I like the colors. So if we can incorporate these into our pictures, we're taking pictures that connect with people. So this isn't just science about how to get pins, it's science about how to take good pictures. And you'll notice that almost all of these have been covered in the course. We've talked about how to keep your background simple and well composed, how to add the right colors, how to keep your lighting and your colors natural through editing, how to shoot in portrait mode and crop your pictures that way. So these are the things that are the marks of a really well composed picture that spreads online. And if you follow the information in this course, you're so far ahead of the game and I'm sure your pictures are going to do very well on social media. And this is just scientific evidence that encourages a lot of the principles that we've developed through this course. For this lesson's homework, I'd like you to test this science for yourself. Go to pinterest.com popular and that'll show you today's most popular pins. All the things that are trending and that are really popular right now in this minute. Look at all of them with this list of six elements in mind and you'll be surprised at how many pictures incorporate at least three or four or five or even all six of those elements. It really is extraordinary how accurate this information is. Second, now that we have all these skills under our belt, I'd like you to do another practice photo shoot that specifically incorporates all six of these elements. Now I don't care if you post it to Pinterest and if you get millions of Pinterest followers, but this will help you take pictures that the social web has voted to be the most appealing and most beautiful type of pictures. So if you can learn to put these elements into practice as the course has taught you, then you will have achieved your job, which is to connect with other people through your photographs. So it's not as if using these elements is right and not using them is wrong. You have the creative control to do whatever you want. It's just something to keep in the back of your mind as you're composing and shooting your photographs.